So talk to you real quick about how you can have your application continue running in the background with background execution. So there's two different platforms. We support Android and iOS, and actually you can build uh, Windows services on Windows. We've been able to do that for a long time. So I'm not going to talk about that today. I'm talking about mobile devices, Android and iOS. There's two different ways to do this. On Android, we have Android services. On iOS, we have background execution mode. They're completely different ways they're implemented because the platforms are completely different. The uh, iOS does work both on C++ and Object Pascal, whereas Android only works on Object Pascal for now. So iOS background execution mode, what it does is that you modify the info.plist file. And this is the file that describes to the iOS operating system how your app behaves. And you do this by going to project options, version information, UI background modes, and you specify the background modes that your application supports. Now, according to Apple's documentation, you have to implement these services. And if you do implement these services, for example, like uh, background audio, then you specify that background mode of background audio. Uh, for a description of each of those modes, you can check out that short URL there at the bottom. So on Android, though, it's a different solution. It, um, it actually is adding an additional service to your Android application. So you're creating a separate binary that's going to run in the background. Uh, this can run even when your app is closed. It's a uh, separate binary that's included in your bundle. So there's different types of services. You have uh, remote and local intent and non-intent services. And one app can contain multiple services. So the four different types of services you have, you have a, a local service, an intent local service, a remote service, and an intent remote service. Now, a local service is only accessible from the host app. An intent service, whether it be local or remote, the host app can send intents to the service for asynchronous calls. So if you're not using an intent service, then all your calls are done in process and they're not asynchronous. And so another important distinction here is that the host app, which is the app that is hosting the service inside of its bundle, can always talk to a service as if it's local. Okay, if it's a remote service, that means your service has been published for external access as well. So that means other apps inside other APKs can talk to your remote service. Enough with the slides, let's do a demonstration. So make sure you how to set your background mode for iOS in Seattle. You go to Project, Options, and scroll down here to the bottom, and I'm doing this in C++, so it works exactly the same in Object Pascal Delphi. And we're gonna hear version info, and you want to make sure you select an iOS configuration. So I'll just do iOS devices, 32-bit platform, all configurations. And we scroll down to the bottom of this list here, and you'll see UI background modes. Okay? So you just hit this drop down here, and you select what background modes that you want to tell the OS that you support. So if you're not doing VoIP in the background, don't tell it you're doing VoIP in the background. Only specify modes for services that your app does. Okay, otherwise they'll probably kick you out of the app store for, for not following their policy. So select the ones that you're doing, and this also is how it notifies the user, so the user knows what's going on in the background. So for example, if you're getting location, the app will set, uh, the OS will pop up and say, hey, this app wants to get your location in the background, and so you have to explicitly allow that as a user. So make sure you select the mode that matches the service that you're doing, and you can specify multiple modes here. VoIP. Um, Bluetooth peripheral, Bluetooth, we'll do Bluetooth central. So there we go. You specify the ones you want and you're ready to go and publish your app for background execution. So we're going to start with a new multi-device application in Delphi. And we're going to put down a label on here just to label what it is. and preview it in Android. There we go. Now we're gonna to add to our project, a new project, Delphi Projects Android Service. Uh, we're gonna stick with local service right now. And we're gonna add a little bit of code here. On start command. 
So this keeps the service running. Now we're going to give our service a friendly name. And we'll give our project a friendly name. This is our app. And now we save everything. And we build our service. Then we add the service to our host app by selecting Android, add Android service, browse to the folder that has the Android and Java classes folders in it, hit next and finish. We're done, we've included the service in here. So now we need to start our service. We do that by coming in here, add this here, a reference to our service, and then in the constructor here, we're going to say uh, service equals t local service connection dot create and f service dot start service. And then the friendly name we gave it, which is rad service. And now we can run this on our Nexus 5. Here it is running on the Nexus 5. It's just displaying the form which says service host. But I'm going to switch over to settings. And we see here that rad host is running with one process and one service. I can start it and we see here we have rad host with the rad service inside running inside the rad host process. I can come over here, dismiss rad host, come back and receipt restarting. And it keeps it running because it's sticky. This example shows how to use a service to download an image in the background and then to pass information back through a notification. When the user clicks the download button from the host application, it uses this intent service helper, which is another unit that's in here. You can take a look at the code for that. That just creates an intent, simplifies the creation of an intent. So intents are objects used in Android to pass information between different uh, processes or different applications. So in this case, we're creating our intent, passing in the name of the service we want to start, which is a download service. You notice it's libdownloadservice.so. So just the module name in this case. Um, so we pass that in here. And then we use Android helper activity start service, passing it the intent. So this starts the service specified by the intent in here and also going to pass the file name to it. That's the majority of the code in here. The only other bit here is I'll show you on the notification center component. It has an event on received local notification that occurs when the a notification is sent back to the application. So when the user taps the notification from the notification area, this sends the notification back to this application. And in this case, we extract the file name that we're going to get passed back and display it to the user. So let's take a look at our service. So our service here, if we look at the code, we can see this is an Android service, not an Android intent service. Okay, but you can still start a service via an intent, even if it's not an intent service. So that's a good note to make. We also have a notification center, which is what we use to uh, send the notification to, back to the user when the service finishes. So in our constructor here, when we create the service, we are going to create these uh, lists, object lists and a list to create, keep track of our threads and our download threads. And that's just so we, we know how, um, so we keep references to those. Because it's conceivable, we could receive multiple download requests while the service is running. So the service could receive multiple download requests and then keep running all those. And we don't want the service to stop until it's finished all of those. So right here, this is the Android service start command. This is when our, our service starts. And see, here's the intent we received that told us when to start. So inside here, we're going to create an anonymous thread. And we pass that intent in here to our process download. And that process download here is where we're going to extract the information from the intent. And again, create a um, thread to download using our download thread which is defined in this other unit here. 
And right here, when the in download occurs, this is when we go through and uh, send the notification back that the download completed and remove our threads. So in this case, remove our download thread so that we know how many threads we have left. All right, so now this is ready to go. So once we've done this, we've created our service and created our host application. We need to add the service to the host application. One quick note is if you ever double click like this and try and run it, you'll get an error because you can't run a service. A service is it's like trying to run a DLL on Windows. So always make sure you're running your host application. But now let's make it our host application. We're gonna come here, target applications or target platforms, and you select Android, and that's case in this case that's the one we have. And we come out here to add Android service, and we're gonna browse for Android service. Now, I'm in the download service folder, but there's nothing here. There should be a Java classes folder. And the reason it's not there is because I haven't built it yet. So let's go back and build it. Build. Add Android service. We browse. And we want to make sure we're in the download service, we're in the folder that contains the Java classes folder, not inside the Java classes folder. So our folder's download service. We see it has the Java classes folder within it. We hit select folder. Hit next, and this is what you should see. There should typically be three, that's the only thing I've ever seen here. So we've added the binary, the .so, the .jar, and it also automatically adds the download service unit pass, which is our data module that is the service itself. And that's for reference purposes. In this case, we don't need it, so I'm gonna go ahead and remove it. You only need that if you're gonna use it for calls or something like that, which in this case we're not using. Okay, so at that point we're done. We've got a reference to from our host application to the service that's been added in here. And you can check that by coming in here under uh, Android Platform Expand Libraries. And we see right here it says the download service.jar. So you can actually add multiple services to a host application. And if you want to remove one, you just come in here, right click on it, and say remove from project. And that will remove the service from the project. Once we've done that, we're now ready to run this on our Android device. So we tap the download button. That launches the service in the background. It can even close it. We see the notification appears. Swipe from the top, tap the notification. It relaunches the application and loads the image for us, just like that. So in this case, the image downloaded quite quickly, but if this was a longer running service, you could see where that can make a difference. Here's an example of a remote service. The thing about our remote services is they're published so that they can be accessed outside of the host application. So if we take a look at our service here, we see that it's a regular Android service, not an Android intent service. So on the service itself, we have an on handle message event, and that's what we're handling here. So the get string and service string, these are constants that are defined in this external unit here. And that way we know which kind of message we're passing back and forth between the host application and the service application. So that unit is used in all of our applications here, or all our projects. So in this event, this event makes use of the Java message class, which is a object used for passing data between processes. So we're gonna look at the message, what it is, if it's a git string, then that means the, it's the message coming from the host application to the service asking for the string that we're gonna give back to it, which in this case is always gonna be the same string. And we return, the service string that just tells it what that we're returning back. This is the response. And so uh, we do it by creating a bundle in the message. And in the bundle, we put the Java strings. We can't send regular strings, we're gonna send Java strings back. And they're key value pairs. And then we reply to our message. So A message is the one that came in, L message is the one we just created. And we reply back to it. And this sends the response back to the host application. So from the host application, to bind to a service, this is gonna work if we're binding to the service we host or if we're binding to a service we're not hosting. Um, you have to use bind if it's a service that you're not hosting, if it's not local to your APK. But if it's local to your APK, you can actually use different techniques for communicating with it. So we're gonna to bind to it. Uh, again, we have to specify the name of the APK containing the service, which in this case is um, app remote host, 
Com Marketer App Remote Host, and then the service name. Now, one note is the way this is implemented, it's always going to be Com Embarcadero Services dot and then the project name. And that's because that's hard coded within the implementation of this. So you're always going to have Com Embarcadero Services Remote Service. There is a way to change it, but it does require changing some of the Java code that is used. So it is possible right now. In the future, it might be easier, but right now, for the most time, you're going to assume that's always this. That's how we bind to it. We bind to that service. And we have an event that occurs when it bound, the binding takes place. So we have signed that event here in our constructor. And it just enables the get data button. So in the get data button, we're going to send a message. And so here's that get string constant, which is the value we're looking for of one, two, three, that the service will then know how to respond. And we send it through the local messenger, and here we send the message. That's it. And then here's where we handle the response. This is the response that comes back from the service. And so again, that service string, which is the 321, which is the response in the service, and we just extract it. In this case, we're going to display it as a toast. Okay, so it doesn't do really anything that interesting except for the fact it is doing it via a remote service. So app remote host is going to host our service. So we, the first thing we do is build this. And we get an error message. The reason we get an error message is there's a bug in here that we'll hopefully see an update for soon, but I'll show you how to work around it. It's pretty easy. We go into the folder here that our service is at. You have to build it first and get the error message. And that generates this Java template. So we come here to this Java template and we need to change this line right here that says private final string library name to base library name. Okay, and now once you do that, we can then build this. Oh, I haven't, for some reason, that's not being used by this unit. So let's go here, file, use unit, source constants. So I, it was underlining that, and see, I should look at the errors and pay attention to what's going on here. So now we can build this and it will work. Errors and warnings for your friend, pay attention to them. Okay, done, completed. So... We've built our service, and so now we're going to add this to our host application. So again, we come here, right-click, add Android service, browse to it, remote service demo, remote service, that's the right folder. We hit select folder, next, and we make sure that this is the right stuff selected. It is. We hit finished. Uh, again, we don't need it. I'm just going to leave it in here because I don't, um, and we can remove it, remove it. Remove from project. I don't need it, so I'll just go to remove it. And now we can run our host application and it will call the remote service. Now, one other note is that let's build this. There is a slight bug in the way it publishes services, and it's easy to fix. So I'll show you. So let's go in here and say. Show and Explorer. So this is our host application. And if we come in here to debug Android Manifest and look at this, we'll see that our service exported is false. So the difference between a local service and a remote service is that exported is set to true. So the template right now always gets created with exported as false. It's easy enough to fix. All we do is copy this line here. And we go up to this Android manifest template file. And we find the line here that's the services line. And we just replace that with this line changing false to true. All right, so now we've overridden the template. So the template's not gonna insert that line, but we've added in that we want to have to be exported. So that's gonna create our uh, remote host to export the, temp the service template or the service via the manifest. Now one note, is yes, it, we, it, we have to come here and modify this manually, but every other Android tool on the planet, when you're doing services, you're editing your AP, your uh, manifest. That's just the way it works. So the fact we have to edit this isn't really that big a deal. So the remote external here is exact, or pretty much exactly the same program as remote host. The code's the same. The only difference is this one is contains the service. This one does not. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and run both of them, and you'll see they behave the same and it's because they're able to talk to the service because it's connecting to it via bind. Now, because this one 
is the host of the service, you can actually connect to it via uh, without using bind, but just for simplicity's sake, they both use bind. So we're going to run the host version first. So this is the host. We're going to bind to it and say get data. And there we go. We got the text back. That was the text that came from the service. So we can close that one and we will run the external one and we'll hit bind. Now, the service is running as long as something is bound to it, whether it be the local server, the local host or the external application. And we say get data and it says this is the service text. So both of these apps talk to the same service, the same process, the same binary and retrieve that text, that string. For more information, check out the um, documentation from Apple on iOS background modes. You can get to it there from that short URL. We have two pages in our doc wiki on Android services right now. The first one is the Android service page and the second one is the creating Android services page. You can find those there. And then also I have uh, a couple of blog posts up and I'll have more coming at delphi.org slash tag slash Android dash services.